Hey guys, in today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can crop an image in Affinity Photo version 2. Version 2 of the software bring few new features about this, so I want to show you how it is right now in 2023. So let's take a look. Here I am in the software. I'm using the desktop version, but it's similar on your iPad. I already load an image. And by default, we usually head to the crop tool over here on the left side. And when you click the tool, you will see that the backdrop is dim and we can see those control points all around. You can simply click on them and this way you can decide on the new size of the image. As you can guess, the bright area in the middle, this will stay. Everything that is dim out will be cropped. If you are ready to commit to the new size, just simply click apply over here. And that's my new size. Let's undo command Z and let's inspect this once more. So that's the crop tool. This time we'll look into some options. As you can see, we can also decide on rotation and even straighten the image. You can do it manually just by hovering your mouse around the corner, not on the corner. This way you will just stretch this up and down, but around the corner. Now I can do a rotation. That's going to be very handy if the image is not straight. Okay. How about this dedicated straightening thing? If I click on that, I can draw a line. So if there's like horizon, when the sky meets the land, that will be the perfect. And then the image will straighten to that line. Okay. And as you can see, it will crop down automatically. That's a new feature in version 2.1. In the past, it didn't. So we got these white areas. Now the image cropped down to the center. So if you rotate the image while cropping, it's becoming smaller and smaller, all right? So keep that in mind. If you are not happy with the result, you can click cancel over here and the crop tool will be cancel. As you can see, by default, we got this grid here, but we can alter that. We can switch this off completely or we can change to spiral. We got diagonal lines like that as well. And there's the grid with the smaller rectangle in the center as well. All right. By default, there is the one that dividing the image into nine points. Okay. So that's a really, really handy. We got rotation straight, different grids. We can reset everything. And if you are not a big fan of this color that dimming the part of the picture, there's also a checkbox for that. Take a look. There is a arrow on my right, this will be determined by the screen size. If you got smaller screen than me, maybe you cannot even see those overlay options. If you get larger screen, maybe you can see this one as well here. All right. So as you can see, we can also maintain the original ratio of the image. And in this case, while you're scaling, you will never change the ratio. This is very handy. If you're going to like print this out, this way you will not mess up the ratio of the photo of the document. We can put the custom ratio as well here. We can do resampling. Or by default, we got this free mode when we can modify the ratio by hand. By the way, if you hold shift, you will keep the original ratio just by holding shift on your keyboard as a shortcut. All right, take a look. There's an option here, preset options. When we got some common ratios like one to one, two to one, 16 to nine, so we can pick a preset as well. If I pick one to one, like for social media, it's giving me a perfect crop for Instagram, let's say. And then you can click apply and you would say you are done. All right. Let me show you a few more tricks. What if we cropping, but actually we want to extend the backdrop, right? 
So what can we do in that case? Let's take a look by default. If you click apply, you got this wide empty area here. So there is one thing we can do about it. We can try to fill it with content aware. So let's undo. And let's say, let's say that you need a little bit more backdrop. So that's actually cropping, but to extend the background. Okay, so let's say we need a little bit more here. And then we're ending up with this wide area. We can use a selection. That would be very base selection over here. And we can try to fill this area with something called in painting over here. Keep in mind, it may take a moment, but here it is. It's generated, it's not AI generated, so it's used colors from the image. As you can see, it's replicate this element here. But if you zoom out like that, it should be good enough. It's always better than the white backdrop. And of course, you can go for actual in-painting brush yourself and do some manual work with it, right? So we can do some manual work so the duplications are not that obvious all right so keep that in mind if you're cropping you can use the in painting to fill in gaps what if you need to crop the image into shape it's also possible in that case you simply draw a shape first so let's head to the shape tool it may be hidden below here as you can see the selection is really nice everything from star to cloud hard shape all of this is here let's go with a very classic perfect circle very popular nowadays for avatars right so what if you actually want to export something like that with png transparent backdrop in that case be sure you unlock the layer with the image and then simply drag this on the circle not above not below but like on it and this way you crop the image into the shape. Take a look. The image is inside the ellipse and everything around is now transparent. So if we export this as PNG, you will get just image as a circle with transparent backdrop. So that's perfect. We can select this area and then easily crop to the selection as you can see. The crop tool already set up exactly on my selection. So that's easy, just apply. And we are ready to export file, export. And we can select PNG. This way you will keep the background transparent. So that's how you can use crop tool. And that's how you can also push a, shape, uh, a photo into a shape, all right? I hope this video was helpful and I We'll see you in the next tutorial. Bye.